hearing of the Gardner Planning Board. We'll open with the announcement of open meeting recordings. Any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium subject to reasonable requirements of the chair as to the number, placement, and operation of equipment used so as not to interfere with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recording shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents referenced or used during the meeting must be submitted in duplicate to the Director of Community Development and Planning pursuant to the Open Meeting and Public Records Law. All documents shall become part of the official record of the meeting. Is there anyone in here tonight recording or taping who needs to identify themselves to the chair? Hearing none, I will now read the public hearing notice into the minutes. Public hearing notice, Compass Lane definitive subdivision in accordance with the City of Gardner rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. Notice is hereby given that the Gardner Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, November 12th at 6.30 p.m. in the Hubbard Conference Room, City Hall, Manka Annex, Pleasant Street, Gardner, Mass., to consider the definitive subdivision plan and application submitted by Private Oversight LLC, 25 Lombard Road, Hubbardston, Mass. The Compass Lane definitive, definitive subdivision plan depicts a 900 linear foot cul-de-sac with 16 parcels and 16 two-family dwelling units. The developable area of the site consists of 6.6 .6 acres with 10.1 acres being left undeveloped. The property is located at the Templeton Gardner town line on the south side of West Broadway. The plans are also available for viewing in the Department of Community Development and Planning in room 201 of the City Hall Annex. All persons interested in this matter or who desire to offer testimony are invited to participate. All right, before we get to presentation time, any preliminaries for us, Mr. Beauregard? Yeah, not right now, Mr. Chair. Very well. Uh, Mr. Fletcher is on board. Yes, how are you doing? Trevor Fletcher, Raz Engineering. Yeah. <coughs> I should turn that on. You got her up? Yes, so uh, this is uh, the <clears throat> subdivision that you're all probably familiar with at this time. Uh, we went through the preliminary uh, hearing, I think, back in the summer at some point. And uh, since that point, we've done, uh, you know, we prepared the definitive uh, plans, 18 sheets with all the, uh, the stormwater details, the landscape details, lighting details, and, uh, and all that stuff. Um, it is still currently uh, being reviewed. We're getting comments in. Uh, but yeah, we have a 16 lot definitive uh, subdivision. Uh, each of the lots is planned to have a duplex on it. And uh, so that is the lot layout right there. This is uh, the remaining area in the back that will be left uh, largely open space. Uh, to the northeast there is the PACC land. Uh, and it all kind of just slopes back that way. Um, and then even further back to the, uh, the southeast is Route 2. So there's not much back there, but it'll be left uh, undeveloped in that area. So this is uh, the beginning of the roadway here. Um, so uh, if you uh, remember the site plan uh, design that we had for the multifamily, it's a similar thing. The infiltration basin is uh, right at the beginning of the site. Uh, everything pitches down to it and uh, all the utilities run uh, through the roadway uh, up to West Broadway, with the exception of the water line, which circumvents the, uh, the can you see my cursor? No. Yeah. Doesn't show. Yep. Oh, it does show. Okay. Yeah. So the water uh, main is going to come uh, to to the roadway at this point, and then go cross country around the infiltration basin, and uh, go into there. And that was to avoid uh, entering into the Templeton uh, Township um, with the with the water line because we're uh, hooking up to Gardner Water in that area. 
And so that's where it ends over in that corner. So that's why we uh, had to run it like that. Uh, in the front up here on the right, we have the common mailbox. And then uh, coming up, you start seeing the, the duplexes, which are on individual lots. And then still, it's the same kind of thing coming all the way up. There are duplexes on both sides. And we end with a cul-de-sac. And then the, uh, the drainage from the rear of the site all drains down towards the uh, infiltration in the back. So that's, yet again, very similar uh, design as we had uh, during the site plan review. Um, the uh, traffic report, uh, we had it uh, revised by Fuss and O'Neill uh, to uh, account for this type of development versus the multifamily. Um, before, I believe we were up at 52 units, and with the duplex development, we're down to 32 units, uh, 16 duplexes. And so that's what they did their traffic counts, and they did their site distances, and all that. We had that area staked out if you've driven by there uh, any time in the last three or four months. Um, and so that's where the it's going to come out. But uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty much the, the same uh, kind of concept as, uh, as I presented in the pre preliminary. Not much has changed, just kind of uh, fine-tuned all the drainage and everything like that. So. And yeah, like I said, at this time, uh, we're still waiting for comments to come in. I think uh, Rob is currently <coughs> going over the, the stormwater comments. Um, we already uh, got some comments for, pertaining to um, zoning and uh, the subdivision rules and regs. Looks like the only major change I'm seeing so far is uh, when I did the roadway measurement, I measured it from the edge of the roadway on West Broadway, and you have to account for the, uh, the distance from the edge of the roadway to the center line of West Broadway. So the road's just gonna have to be shortened by about 14 feet, which is probably gonna cause a couple of houses to be shifted, but I don't expect any major changes with that. So that is uh, where we're at right now. I believe Mr. Arnold wanted to confer with the engineer about uh, the uh, extending the sewer? I believe it was a, a sewer permit extension request. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You're, you're, you're already aware of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Which is standard. Yep. Yeah. 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 Trevor, can you talk more about the infrastructure in the site, uh, sidewalks, uh, crosswalks? Uh, sure. Anything else you can identify? Yep. Yeah, so the, uh, the sidewalks, uh, there's, it, starts right here and it wraps around the entire site and we just have a sidewalk on one side of the roadway all the way down. Uh, so there's really uh, no need for, for crosswalks. If they, I don't even think you can have crosswalks if you don't have sidewalk on okay. both sides. So it just keeps coming down and all the way to the, uh, the common driveway and ends at the right of way. But there is no uh, sidewalk to tie into uh, on West Broadway. So that's kind of where it's going to end unless they put one in. Landscape plan. Landscaping plan. Yeah, it's like very similar to what we had before. That is the profile, profile, water plan. So yeah, this is the landscape plan. Um, so throughout the uh, the entire development, there's several trees. All these circular. Um, uh, little symbols right here indicate a different tree that is proposed and uh, so we have you know upwards of you know 45 <coughs> 45 to 50 trees throughout the entire development um, and it's just kind of standard to uh, what uh, the subdivision rules and regs call for um, next sheet here Erosion control, sediment control, and here is the uh, lighting plan. So scale, it's not great. Yeah, uh, anywhere you see a, a red dot is going to be uh, the street lights. So there's going to be uh, plenty of light throughout the entire development. We have uh, three three lights around the cul-de-sac here, and the next page should be the photometric plans right here. That's you can't see much, but they uh, there's like contours. So essentially, the entire roadway is going to be uh, lit up. Is what this uh, this entails. It'll all be downcast lighting uh, down towards the road, so that should shed uh, minimal light uh, off site. And uh, what's the height of the lights? Drum? The height of the lights. Uh, let's see here. 
mounted on a 15 foot pole. <clears throat> Is there a grass strip between the sidewalk and roadway? Yes. Yes, so. So this is the cross section of the roadway here. So you have the five foot sidewalk here, a three foot grass, uh, grass plot, vertical granite curbing, uh, 24 foot wide pavement. Uh, those roads were updated relatively recently. Uh, they changed the regulation from 28 feet uh, minimum pavement width to 24. So that's what that reflects. And then vertical curbing on the other side. And that just shows uh, the shoulder on the opposite side and then the grading. So what, will any of the trees be planted in the, um, the grass? Uh, I believe they're all on the, uh, the outside of the uh, in, pit. In the, front, uh, uh, in the front yards? or I think they are, <coughs> if I'm recalling correctly, I believe they are all um, on the outside of this uh, sidewalk. So let's see if I can zoom in on one. Yeah, so you can see right here, they're right on the outside of the, uh, the right of way, and that's it compared to the walkway. So they are all on the outside of the walkway as well. Maybe speak a little bit about the phasing plan also. Sure, please. Yeah. Uh, so, so these are the different phases. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, I think we have three different phases here. So phase one uh, starts off uh, by constructing uh, tediment, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, temporary sediment basins and uh, so once those are constructed then uh, pretty much all the other work can be uh, started. Uh, the te temporary sediment basins are an erosion control method so when you're disturbing the site you can just direct all the water to it and uh, so it filters out the water during the construction phase. So once uh, that's done then the roadway uh, construction can begin and uh, <clears throat> I believe we have all that under one phase. And there's uh, a couple of different uh, sediment, uh, temporary sediment basins on site. So all those have to be constructed and the roadway can be constructed and uh, stabilized. <clears throat> and then once that's done, the, uh, and everything's stabilized, the basins themselves can be constructed. And that's when all the uh, conveyances for the roadway can be uh, constructed uh, to them, uh, or constructed to, to go to the infiltration basins once everything's stabilized. That way it doesn't uh, interfere with infiltration capability of the basins. And then once all that's done, then the individual housing construction can start under phase three. So phase three will be all the, all the structures? All Correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. It probably won't be all at once, probably one at a time. <coughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then on site, you know, when they do the house construction, they do smaller little temporary sediment basins as they see fit. So all that disturbance goes there, and then once stabilization happens, then they can uh, direct all the, the <coughs> flow to the, to the street or to uh, their final destinations. Any questions from the board members? I have none. 
time at all. The, uh, the traffic report, the recommendation, one of the recommendations that I was concerned about also is the entrance or, or leaving the, uh, the property is the, uh, the vegetation. Mm -hmm. How far were you going to back up the vegetation from two way? From the, from the road going out, so people can see when they're, if, they're, if they are leaving. I see you have one tree almost, you know, one of the photographs, you have one tree almost at the end of it, end of the road. Yeah. So the recommendation to travel, <clears throat> I mean, the, uh, the traffic was uh, try to make it vegetation free, meaning no big shrubs, no big trees, so the view on both, both ways could be seen. Yeah. So I'm not too sure how much uh, you were willing to cut back there was no specific uh, feet or for se, even left or right of the driveway also. Yeah. So do you know what? The, I, th I think it's kind of a, as an, on an as need basis. I mean, even after construction, it's gonna come back and then they're gonna have to do uh, periodic uh, removal of that. <clears throat> but if it's in the right of way, I think that's gonna have to be taken up uh, through the, the DOT permit. Uh, they'll take a look at you know the site distance and everything like that. They'll make recommendations on what can be done in their right of way. So uh, <clears throat> certain linear feet, uh, I believe anything on the basin, we're, we're kind of grading up right to the, uh, the, the uh, right of way line with the, the grading off of that. And uh, so we're gonna have to take most of those trees along the front on that side. Uh, the area to the left, uh, we only own, I think about Not much. 20, 25 right, feet there was but, <clears throat> Luckily the, uh, the right of way actually kind of comes out like into the, uh, into yeah, the site a little want, bit, yeah. so you'll have a little bit of room to, to clear any of the brush. Yeah, so you, you just need to see the car go halfway in a row just to look left and right to see Correct, if you can yeah. get out safely too. You know, so yep. You want to make sure you can get out safely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the area in, in here, all the grade is going to be going up pretty much right to the road. So mm -hmm. all the vegetation on our parcel should be cut yeah. down right in that area. So if there's any trees, I don't believe... Well, there was one of them, it looked like you, uh, the new trees you were planting was right, uh, one of, one of the, <coughs> it was pretty close to... Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, obviously, that wouldn't be able to put there. Yeah, the, the biggest problem with uh, site distances is, is, is typically brush. See right there. Yeah, it's so that's... Uh, that tree there. Yeah, that's going to be on the back side of the even the sign. So uh, if people want to see the sign coming in... Well, uh, again, so where would the sign be? Sign. I guess that could be blocking people's view, or right how far there. back is that going to be? No, I mean the stop sign is going to be roughly right in this area. So everything that you're you're seeing kind of past. Oh, you talking a stop sign? I thought you meant maybe a, a a sign that says "Welcome to Compass Lane." I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So that that's going to be located right here. So there's quite a long distance between this and this. It's about 15 feet from the edge of the property to the actual pavement. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you have a stop sign right at the okay, pavement, the front of your car, you're probably going to be well, six the feet back right there. Yeah. Maybe that big sign. Yeah. yeah. So not too short kind of sign they're going to put up. Yeah. So there, there shouldn't be uh, you know an issue with sight distance due to brush as long as they keep it keep it trimmed back and uh, uh, you know and mow it. And I think they they do a pretty good job because the sewer line uh, actually runs right in this area here. So they don't allow saplings to grow. They don't allow anything to grow in that because it would make it a, you know, okay. a hassle you. for the sewer line. That's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cormier. Question, are, we, are they going to have to apply through DOT for the high end to Route 2A at the end of Yes. The yeah. the they'll, need, they'll need an access permit. Yeah. And DOT will be very thorough on yep. things like site distances and um, anything that's drainage, anything that's happening in the state highway layout. <clears throat> Excuse me. They'll really go through with a fine tooth comb. And typically what we do with that is uh, once we get through the first round of comments and the plans are coming to their final state, once those plans are done, then that's when we uh, start the process with the DOT rather than having you know, the, the first set of plans before the review comes through. And so it's a little bit more of a finalized state. So we're not you know, revising the plan left, right, sending this plan over here. So it's a little bit more organized and uh, you know, lines aren't getting too crossed. Did I understand, Rob, you're still studying the uh, stormwater plan? Yes, I haven't had the opportunity to look through um, everything. Uh, my, my comments that I submitted were basically just on my review of the subdivision with the subdivision rules and regs and zoning, um, I haven't had an opportunity to complete stormwater and a detailed look at it. Thank you. All set, folks. Anything further from staff? 
Very well. This is the uh, portion of the hearing where we'll open up the public testimony. Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in favor of this definitive site plan? Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in favor of this definitive site plan? Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in favor of this definitive site plan? Hearing none, is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in opposition to this definitive site plan? Okay, we have. All right, your uh, name and address, please, for the record. Two Overland, East Templeton, out of the butter. And I have questions. Um, it's now it's now planned to be a city-approved road. In and it's. Uh, what's the width going to be on that requirement? The pavement width or the right of way? The pavement width is going to be 24 feet, but the, uh, the width of what the city would uh, take over is 50 feet. Okay. I have a question <coughs> about the um, traffic report. Do you have anything newer than the 2022, or that's the only one that was done? Yeah, they just redid one in 2024, and uh, that should be available at the, the Gardner office. Uh, Fuss and O'Neill did the uh, did the traffic report just like he did the one. Was there any significant changes in the newer one? Uh, I did not see. I saw the plans last week, but I did not see the uh, traffic report. Yeah, uh, I don't believe they uh, there was any major major differences. Uh, between the two the two reports he looked through like police records and everything like that um and I'm, i don't think he found anything uh too substantial in, in that uh, review um but yeah that's all available uh we can get you a pdf if you want to look through it um in the meantime before the next meeting um i question i i haven't seen the newest one so my question on the amount of traffic that's going by uh, i think is significantly increased since the 2022 mm -hmm. maybe that was because it was post pandemic and um when i i took account just myself and uh, the fuss and o'neill one said that um you know they had about 265 vehicles in an hour and uh, the, the highest one i had in an hour was 506 I had a low of 388, and then the others were 429, 488. So it's quite a bit more than the 2022 report. Yeah, so they, recount, they recounted for uh, 2024, but I don't, I don't have the numbers committed to memory. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. So I guess I have a concern about increased amount of traffic and the safety concerns that we many the neighbors have had about coming in and out of that area and the sight lines and the volume of traffic is a little bit more than I think than what was originally planned for. So I, I can come into City Hall and see those numbers anytime. Okay. Yeah, I got the, a little portion of the report here, just a comparison for numbers. Uh, they said uh, in the busiest hour, it's 402.3 between four and five is uh, what, they, what they were having on that. Uh, they had that and those, <coughs> those strips on the set up, and that's how they did the county automatic uh, traffic recording data. So, yeah, that, that's all in here. So, if you want a PDF of that. Um, is there, is there any plan um, about the tree cutting phase one that you can let me know anything more about? Yeah, so the, uh, the extents of the, the whole project will be, uh, will be cut during the uh, phase one. Uh, so the loggers only have to get in there once. Typically, they'll leave the stumps in place so the, you know, the sediment doesn't get disturbed in that. And as the phases progress, anything that's going to be constructed, <coughs> that's when they dig up the stumps and uh, to, to minimize the uh, erosion, uh, erosion potential on site uh, at any given time. So the, the stumps that are dug up, where are they going to be moved to in the meantime before they moved off-site? 
Uh, typically, they have uh, stockpile areas uh, on site that they set up. I have a couple on the uh, couple of general ideas, but the contractor usually takes that into, into liberty. And uh, you know, there's, there's rules in the, the EPA regulations, uh, the SWIP report, or the SWIP that they have to have. They have to storm the stockpiles, protect them with erosion control, and everything like that. But you know, ideally, they're taken off site uh, or ground up on site uh, immediately. So the tree cutting is going to go just past the end of that cul-de-sac area? Correct. So uh, <clears throat> what about the side lines? Like where my property abuts and other people's properties abut? How close are you going to get to the property lines? So right here. So right here, you can see the edge of the, uh, edge of the tree line. So we're leaving as much of a buffer as we can to you know, allow for you know the uh, the common mailbox and the uh, then for the grading associated with uh, the rest of the project here. So we're we're trying to give you your, your buffer. That would be the the zoning setback. All trees is uh, what we're going to be staking out for for clearing, and then it's going to taper back, and uh, this substantial buffer back here, and then uh, right here. This is the parcel that already has been cleared as part of that development uh, in the back. So uh, we kind of have to clear right up to the edge of that along the stone wall. And uh, this is also bordering that, that land back there, Bruce. And on that diagram where you have the cul-de-sac before you move off of that, yeah. at the end of the cul-de-sac, it looks like there's maybe, a, did I see something written up about a dirt or gravel road? And what's the purpose of that? Yeah, so that is going to be for, uh, well, let me just get, get it up so I can speak while I, uh, right here. So uh, it's required to have a, a little access road to uh, get into the basin to, to maintain that. So that's just that little 20-foot strip that goes right back there for access uh, to that area. And can you tell me something about the elevations? What's going to change of what's there now and what it's going to be as far as like how many feet difference in elevation and what about runoff and that kind of thing? Yeah, so typically, uh, we have the, the roadway kind of intersecting the, uh, the hill going uh, on that side. So what you want to do is on the high side, which is uh, your side on this side, we typically cut that down. Or in this case, uh, we have uh, a, a plans for the, the foundation that will actually have a flat backyard right here. And then the, uh, it'll be like a drive under in the front over here. Uh, so the, it'll <coughs> kind of It'll be the similar drainage pattern. It'll just be a little bit more flat, down, flat, down, uh, as you go along the whole the whole slope. And uh, so it's a little bit more of an environmentally sensitive design in that aspect versus putting large retaining walls <coughs> back and you know, all that. So it's kind of trying to blend in with the hill as much as possible. Uh, if you're talking in front, let's see. Back to the front of the site. Towards you. Uh, so the contours are kind of run this way right here and kind of come around and they end up looping back around like that. And so essentially the, the proposed contours are kind of coming like this and then like that. So it's, it's very similar in design and topography. It's going to fit in with it pretty well. There's not going to be large mounds or anything like that other than where you see the, the basins where we had to retain water. And uh, then it will be kind of steeper on the downhill uh, size of the, the basins. But as far as the development itself, it, it blends in with the topography pretty well. And my, my properties that are about five of the lots, I, I shouldn't expect problems with water coming in my direction? No, everything flows downhill from... To that basin? Correct, yeah. In the front? Yeah, and then, uh, so What's everything the, flows towards the, the Deer Hill uh, subdivision, but the, uh, essentially what the roadway does is it intersects all that flow and it routes it to the basin in the front and the basin in the back. So actually Deer Hill subdivision should be seeing a lot less water as well. So at the back, how is that water gonna to get to the back? Because it generally slopes uphill. The, the elevation the, is more uphill. How are you gonna get that water to get to a basin up there? Oh, in the rear of the site? In the rear, yeah. So uh, all this water is going to go back All this water comes down uh, down a slope like this, and then it hits the roadway. And we have uh, catch basins and uh, drainage uh, structures, so everything will be caught in the roadway by these drainage structures. And then they 
come over here and there's another drain manhole here, another drain manhole here, and it's routed into this basin. And it's discharged uh, down towards the, the wetlands around the PACC. But it's, you know, so it's, everything's routed around that whole thing and then discharged out in the open space and then to a, to a culvert at the uh, West Broadway. Is there going to be any planting in the back of the lots of either side of the development? In the, like the ones that are that near the abutters, or you're not going to do anything back there? There'll be, uh, there'll be the, the buffer that we, were, we showed earlier, that uh, zoning setback buffer uh, that we're going to leave. Uh, but then it's a matter of you know, what the homeowners want to do in their backyard. So that's uh, really not our purview. They might plant trees. They, they might want just lawn. Um, yeah. A question about the setbacks? Like the ones on the um, the eastern side, um, I lost my train of thought. The the buffer zone. The, the, you said the buffer zone. So you have setbacks where you can put buildings. So is on the eastern side. Or the western side. The eastern side is all gardener, and the western side is some Templeton and some gardener. So all the houses are actually going to be located in uh, gardener. There's not going to be no building permits pulled in Templeton. Um, I'll show you the. Uh, <coughs> so in this area right here, the town line actually runs right here, this dashed line. Mm -hmm. And so all the structures are going to be located in uh, in gardener, not Templeton. Coming across. Snow storage and snow plowing, that's the plowing is going to be done by the city? If the town accepts the roadway, yes. Until such time it's uh, on the owner right. to maintain that road. So what's the plan in the, for the owner to do, a, are they going to plow, where are they going to store the snow if it's a lot? And what's the city plan? If it was approved as a city approved street, do they just plow or do they have a dumping plan for that? I mean, yeah, it, you know, if it's a moderate amount of snow, I'm sure they'll just plow to the side like they do uh, any other street. Uh, if we get, you know, a dumping or something like that, then, you know, someone would have to probably get in there with a, with a front loader and probably break down that access road to the tourist back and, and dump the snow back out there somewhere. But it would be handled like any other, any other street and garden or typically. When works when work is being done, is there a time limit of like hours of the day or days of the week that they're limited to? Yeah, typically it's uh, I believe seven or eight to five on weekdays, and then I think uh, on Saturdays eight to eight to noon or something like that. Can't that sounds right. I don't have a piece of rice. Do you think that's bad? Is that typically in a con the condition of approval if approval is granted? It will be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, so, yeah. I think it's typically 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And I'm not sure about weekends. I mean, you might have to get special permission yeah, okay. through the building commissioner. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to be heard in opposition to this defendant's site? Is there anyone here? Sir, your name and your street address for the record. And I'm on the butter. Um, I had a question today. I called the uh, Templeton PD to talk to the chief. He's on uh, vacation, but the guy's standing in for him. Templeton PD had no idea this was going in. And the entrance is in Templeton. When, the road, when they come out of the road, it is Templeton. So Templeton had no idea they were putting a a driveway or a roadway right there at that corner. Um, I I told him, he said he would like to, to talk. He's going to talk to the chief as soon as he gets back. <coughs> They're uh, going to go up there. He's going to bring the fire chief with him. And I would also ask him, too, to get the gardener chief and their fire department to go up there and check that exit. To piggyback onto her, if there is a lot of snow, it's already a blind area where they're pulling out. If you have a lot of snow, they're never going to be able to see.
coming out of that entrance or exit. It's a blind entrance. If you're coming from Gardner and turning in there, you're turning blind because it's a hill. It's, you don't know what's coming over the hill or around the corner. So that's why Templeton was upset. They were never told this was coming in it was, or where the entrance or exit was. They seem to have a big problem with it. Um, also, was an environmental impact study done on this? I don't believe so, no. <clears throat> because the area has already been compromised by the other builder who clear cut the top of the hill. So we've already been having water issues. So when you cut the rest of the trees down that are going down the hill and put a few trees back in there, you're going to overload whatever water comes down there is going straight down. What happens when those stormwater drains overflow? Where does the water go? How much, how much volume can that water, those stormwater storage areas take? If we have the volume that's been coming down the hill now, and then you take all those trees out, there's going to be even more water coming down. Nobody accounts for that. These people that do these studies have no idea what's been going on up there. They have no idea what's beyond this little picture that above the hill has already been compromised by all those trees that they cut down where we're already having problems with water. So, to me, these companies that do these surveys and these things have no idea what's going on up there. So, a lot of that has to be taken into consideration when they're talking about <coughs> that stormwater storage for this and that. They have no idea how much volume of water comes down. It's all ledge up there, so everything comes down that hill, and it's a long, and it all points down to this area. Everything flows into that area right now, and it's a long, straight shot that nothing's stopping it. So, to me, they, they need to get some people up there and really do a back, you know, real good background of what's going on up there before they start any of this. Because I don't think they can control the water that's going to come down that hill with these storage these uh, stormwater drains in storage, even when they start cutting all those trees down. Come this spring, that's going to be flooded. Because you ain't going to have the trees back in there. Once you cut all those trees out, it's going to be a while before you put more trees back in there. So what's stopping the water in that meantime? I don't think these little things they're putting off to the side to catch some of this water is going to even come close to catching all the water that's going to come down that hill. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who'd like to be heard in opposition to this definitive site plan? Ma'am? I just had a question about um, fire hydrants. Um, if, are there going to be any on that new road, or are they just relying on what's already down on West Broadway? There are actually going to be two proposed, one about halfway up the roadway, and then one at the, the end of the, the cul-de-sac. So there'll be two, two new fire hydrants up there. And they'll have pressure to to serve the the purposes of fire needs in that area with those type of hydrants. Yeah, uh, I believe when we were going through the site plan approval, there was no uh, issues with DPW mentioning uh, any pressure issues down at that end. Um, they have to review it as part of uh, this whole process again. So if they uh, see any issues, they will flag them up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Some of the opposers, a neutral party. Okay. Are you good? Did you, did you have a comment, sir? Yeah. Please. Oh, okay. Uh, Your name and uh, address for the record. Uh, Kirk Machete, I'm the chairman of the Templeton Planning Board. Mr. Um, Machete, go ahead. Just a couple of questions. I don't really want to get into the engineering aspect of it because line shares and Gardner are the fact that I will mention, if you don't mind, are you, are you the chairman, sir? And your name is what? Mark Schaffer. Schaffer, Mark. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for letting me speak. Certainly. Um, Trevor? Travis. Trevor. Sorry. It's a 50 50 shot. I get it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had mentioned that you rely on the, the water coming from the, we'll call it the, uh, the west, the high side, as it sheeting off and going into the catch bases. From, I'm just asking a question, I'm not criticizing. 
But is that a good engineering practice, being that we have winter here and you're shedding all the water across the uh, city right away onto a city street, basically from private property onto the city street? Because I know, look in Temple, and we we frown on that draining water from private property onto the street. Where here you're actually encouraging it from the from the design standpoint. So I don't know if this sticking a bug in the planning board's ear. Not my problem, not my town, okay? Um, it just doesn't seem like it should be done that way. I wouldn't allow it in Templeton. Um, second question through you, Mr. Chairman, is the applicant here? Mm -hmm. Okay, who, who might the applicant be? Oh, okay, right there, all right. Hello. Hey. Um, why has this not been brought to Templeton yet, or do you not plan on bringing it to Templeton? Because otherwise you have no way in or out. Uh, I, I believe we're, we're gonna go to Templeton. Um, I, I believe the reason we were waiting is to get the more finalized plans as uh, essentially it's just the uh, the lot area in Templeton that would have to be approved in the back. And then uh, I think- The lot area in the back, I'm sorry. The lot area in the back right here. So these are all part of the, part of the lots. So I think it's a formality that the Templeton Planning Board has to sign off on uh, the portion of the definitive- Oh, portion of the ANR. Correct. Okay. Uh, and I don't think it would be an ANR. I, oh, it might be. It would be. It's kind of like a weird gray area. So we were going to go through that. Um, yeah, after, so, yeah. And then the, uh, the roadway is a, a, a state-run uh, roadway. So um, I, I don't know if, if that's- it's, it's still Templeton property. And quite honestly, as Mr. Robertson said, I think that the sight lines really need to be take it in consideration, if not moved west. So before you put this thing into a mile hour, you might want to consider um, letting Temple and get involved with this, because I just don't see it happening where it is. And I'll give you a, a, a hands-on. I actually happened to myself last winter, coming around the corner, it was one of those snow squalls, what have you. I come around the corner heading towards Gardner in my pickup truck, normal speed, Come around the corner, there was a big oak tree, or a big, a real big tree, I don't know if everybody here remembers it last year, mm -hmm. down and I literally drove right through that tree. I could not stop, mm -hmm. come around the corner. And lo and behold, right to my right was the orange stakes with this rose proposed. And so I'm just looking at a school bus, um, a minivan with three young kids in it, and um, we'll call it a gravel truck coming around the corner, or a concrete truck coming around the corner. They're gonna run right over them. The sight lines don't work. Um, I, for one, through Templeton's capacity, will solicit the state to have that corner either lowered or a sight line moved down further because that's unacceptable as far as I stand. As my capacity of chairman of the planning board, I will take that to the board that this, and I'm not against the project, I'm a developer myself. I'm against the placement of the driveway coming in, the roadway coming in. So. Just yeah, we, we place it as far west as we as we can on, on the property, and uh, but uh, once again, safety to me is comes before money every time. Okay, and you, if you're gonna put if anybody in this room wants to put a price on somebody's life, I like to know what that number is right now. Trevor, can you show a uh, view of the entrance, please? <clears throat> Sorry, through you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, the, uh, the infiltration basin is right there, so we really need all that size because that's the downhill uh, portion of the site, so all the stormwater flows into the, into the infiltration basin on that side. So uh, to, to meet the, uh, the stormwater regs in the city of Gardner, we had to size it like that, and uh, we really need all that space. So, uh, and then if you move it that way, you're actually going downhill more, which makes this site distance even worse. At this point right now, uh, when I, I walked, there's a, this utility pole right here, there's a, uh, a diamond, a silver diamond on it. And so I walked as far as I could down this way, and I, I believe I got right to, to Baker Street, and you can actually see that silver diamond on that still. So <clears throat> the, the site distance doesn't, doesn't look good, but you know, Fuss and Neil went through it. Uh, they came up with a site distance that was uh, adequate to the speed that they measured, not even close to speed. Um, and uh, so that's kind of where we're at. And uh, so yeah, I mean, as I said, three foot gray stake in the ground right here, you might not be able to see, but you know, like a car, you know, you know, is a little bit higher than that typically. So you might be able to, you should be able to see that a little bit better at the, at the stop sign. So I believe the, uh, the, the sight distance isn't isn't as bad as it seems as if you can see that silver diamond all the way up to the to Baker Lane. That's just uh, my observation uh, when I was out there. And you can you can actually go on Google Maps and you can actually keep going back and back and back and you can still see that silver diamond all the way back to, to Baker Lane. Um, but yeah, F Fuss and O'Neill was the traffic engineer on that, so I I can't really speak to uh, the sight distance. I have an observation about that. Have your, uh, we need to name an address. Of butter. So the problem really becomes when you're headed west on two way, you're further over to the Eames house, you can't see you're cutting off even more of looking down to, towards Baker Lane. So it, that's really more significant. You, so heading up west this way? Coming from this way? Yeah. And you're trying to take a left-hand turn into your road, you can't see the, your sight line down to the Baker Lane is cut down even more because you're on the other side of the road. And now, when you're taking the turn, if you got grave cement truck coming around the corner, it's going to be you've only got you know what a couple hundred, three hundred feet maybe. Okay. So I think that's more significant going west, standing on the southern side looking at people coming this way. Yeah, if you stand on your tiptoes, you can see down Baker Lane, but you're on the other side of the road looking, you can't. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll talk with the, the traffic engineer. We'll, we'll have him uh, try to address the, that, that point and, uh, and hone in on that. And, uh, and the other question I have is, is general, are these buildings, or this development intended to be all rental, so people you know coming and going all the time, or are they gonna be owner occupied, somebody's gonna buy the, the condo or something and share the building. So uh, right now it's, uh, it's planned to be owned by, uh, by the developers right now, but it's still gonna be a definitive subdivision. So if they wanted to sell one or two or three of the duplexes, they could. It'll all be under a homeowners association, but the individual lots can be sold. So it's not, it's not a project that's just always bought and sold by the, mm -hmm. you know, by the same people. So it can be parsed out just because of the nature of being a, a subdivision. The definitive plan. Okay. Anything further from the public? I I don't haven't seen that Fuss and O'Neill report for the newest one, but they um they've recommended distances for stopping site distance and intersection site distance, and out of like six of the statistics, five of them are very close to the low side of the recommended so i don't know if there's you know something you can do to look at that you know like eastbound it says recommend at least 385 and there's uh, it says it exists at 400 mm -hmm. and um, for the intersection site distances westbound recommended 510 and it exists at 525 eastbound recommended 440 exists at 444 and i don't know if that more those numbers have changed because you've shifted the road around you know, in some of the plans over the past three years or more? Yeah, I think the uh, entrance hasn't changed, so those numbers should still be uh, accurate. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're recommending uh, certain site distances and they're just showing how much, how much is provided in that. So it's, it exceeds their recommendation. That's, that's but I think they're, they're on the low side and 
considering there's traffic issues and accidents and things. Over the past month, in front of our property, going towards the development, there was a vehicle went off the road, on, off the, over the curb, and went maybe 20, 24 feet across the front of my property, dug up all the sod, and then was in like, there was like maybe another 25 feet before you get to your, um, the pins, mm -hmm. and they must have gotten back on the road, but that was just in the past month. Okay. So it's concerning. Anything further? Very well, here we are. We will continue this public uh, hearing. Yeah, when I, that's right, December 10th. Sorry, I left that out. We'll continue this public hearing until our December 10th session. Now let's transition into our regular meeting. First item of business, uh, approval of minutes from August 13th, since we, we did not meet in September and October. Make a motion to accept the minutes if presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? By voice. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Motion carries. All right. Private Oversight LLC proposed Compass Lane Subdivision Definitive Site Plan under new business. Uh, after what I heard tonight, and what I've seen and some of the concerns from the public, I, I'm leaning towards uh, uh, third-party site plan review with a particular emphasis on stormwater and the traffic study. I concur. Guys concur? I agree. I think it's for the best. All right. I'd entertain a motion to that fact. I'll make a motion to go to the third-party review. review, if you would, for a third-party traffic study and stormwater report. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. We'll go by uh, go by the roll, starting with me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Old business. Nothing on there. Next meeting, Tuesday, December 10th, where we'll take up the uh, hey, uh, public hearing for uh, Compass Lane Subdivision one more time. And that's about it. Yeah, anything further from staff? Mr. Chairman, just so everybody understands, so there, um, the department heads have 45 days to respond to provide comments to the planning board once they've received the plan. Um, that 45 days is done up yet, so uh, we should have all comments back for the next meeting. So if there are any additional, we can introduce them at the public hearing. Um, and then discussion, hopefully. I've shared a scope of service with everybody on the... Um, um, the traffic analysis and the stormwater review from a third party. And um, hopefully we'll have all that information prior to the next meeting also. So the, so the applicant has time to review it um, prior to and, and, and the city engineer. Um, and you should, depending on how long it takes them to review, we might need to continue one meeting. Just, you know, I, I know how busy they are over there. Uh, yeah. they, they have heavy, heavy workload, so uh, having everything for them to be done in a month and then, you know, us revise the plans for you guys to look at uh, might be a stretch, but if they can get it to turn around to us and we can turn around, we'll do that, but we might be seeking that continuance uh, just, just at the January meeting if it comes to that. That's fine. Anything further? Uh, I, I guess I just add uh, one just item. Is there any way we can uh, send uh, city engineers' comments along with uh, the plans to tie bond that way? If there's any uh, duplicative uh, comments based off of like engineering practice, there's no conflicting comments. One person telling me to do one thing, one person telling me to do another thing, me not knowing who uh, how to rectify it. I've already recommended that <clears throat> if if there's a peer review done, so I'll work with Diane Bonding to make okay. sure because I know there were comments on stormwater that I was guiding you, and so they have the backstory on how we got to where we are. Okay, I I wanted them to be aware of that, and I'll I'll talk to them. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't getting uh, two different directives to, to make different changes. That's like, uh, perfectly understandable. Yeah, that's what that's what I want to avoid. Okay. All right. I think that's that's it. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. I think we're done. Unless you have anything further for the board. Entertain a motion. I make a motion. Yes, sir. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.